What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to pull the industry of a stock into Google Finance. And then on top of that, I'm going to show you how to take this list, concentrate it into a smaller list like this so there's no repeats. And then you're able to create a nice graph showing the pie chart of the industries um, of exactly what your breakdown portfolio is. So let's get started. As you can see right here, we have about it's 17 different stocks. I just threw in some random shares. Here's the price. We're pulling from Google Finance for the price. The market value, we're just adding those two cells together. Now for the industries, we're going to be pulling from a new website. It's going to be an import XML file uh, or function, should I say. And then to place it into this breakdown, we're going to be using a new function that I haven't showed you guys yet. And then making the chart is the easy part. But let's just show you how this all works. Uh, here's Apple right now. It's information technology. If we were to change this, so let's change it to CVS. That should be the healthcare. There it is. Industry changes to healthcare. And you can see our breakdown changes right here to healthcare as well. Let's uh, sort this A to Z. And let's see if our consumer discretionary is at the top. Here's consumer discretionary, Home Depot and Target. Uh, just to show you that this will update accordingly. So instead of 20 shares, let's say I had 200 shares. So now my market value jumped to 52%. Uh, just for Home Depot, if you add these two together, we get 61% for the industry of consumer discretionary. And here's the pie chart updating uh, as well. So let's bring that back down to 200. That just proves that all of this works. It's all connected together. Let's dive right in. So we're going to start fresh, brand new sheet. We're actually going to jump back here and I'm going to steal these headings like I always do just to save some time. So we have that there. And then right here, we're going to merge those cells and we're going to do industry breakdown. All right, and let's center this. So we're just gonna go really quick through all this stuff. I'm just gonna take from here all of the stocks that I have and the shares because that's not really that important. You guys should already know how to do that. So there's our stocks, there's our shares. Price is equals Google Finance. Again, these are functions you should already know. Um, so we're gonna do Google Finance, Home Depot, comma, price. Close that out, yes. All right, market value, like I said, we're just gonna take the price and multiply it by the shares or vice versa, fill that out. Okay, great, now that we have this all set up, we can start to dive into the industry. So how are we pulling the data from the industry? It's not gonna be from Finviz, I've tried that, it didn't work. Um, it's also not gonna be from Yahoo Finance, it just doesn't pull nicely. So pretty much what we're gonna be doing is we're actually pulling from Fidelity, which is a brokerage account. Um, but what's nice about that is we could look up different stocks there. And there's some beautiful tables there that we could really scrape some nice data from. So let me just uh, do this, get this all set up. Okay. So before we even get into what the Fidelity uh, code is going to be, we're going to want to start our code off with an if is blank. So if is blank, and you'll see why. Uh, A2, right? Because this is A2 Home Depot. So if that cell is blank, comma, quotation, quotation, comma. Then we're going to go to index. All right. Open parentheses, import. X M L open quotations, uh, open parenthesis, open quotations. Now here's where we're pulling from. I'm going to jump open to fidelity and this is what we want. We want the e-research fidelity.com e-research go to evaluate snapshot J T uh, J H T M L question mark symbols equal. Okay. That is part one. And what are we pulling? If we scroll down, let's see, where is it? It is somewhere on here. Here we go. So right here, this is what we're pulling. We are pulling the information technology, part of the sector, industry sector. I mean, this is the best I got for you. 
So we're going to be pulling this information right here. We want information technology for Apple and pretty much. So here we could copy this. It's going to be all of this up here, all the way up to symbols equals. You're going to hit control copy. Okay. And then you are going to go here, control paste. So that's in there. And don't worry, this code is in the description below. So you can just copy and paste from there. I'd like to teach you guys where I'm pulling this stuff. And let's see. So once we have that, the next part that we're going to need to do, we want this cell, which is Home Depot, right? So to get cell A2, we're going to want to do end. Okay, well, actually, before that, I'm sorry, we want to close those quotations, then we want to do end, and then we could pick a two. And then we do end again, close those quotations. And then we will open up another quotation, we will do a comma, close that quotation. And then there's another part of the uh, website that we have to pull from. If we go into the source code, so if you highlight this to information technology, let's see if we can do this. Uh, let's just right click, inspect. And the source code we're going to be pulling from is actually, let's see, where's it right here? This subheading, this div class equals subheading. And then there's a few more things, which again, could copy from my description. I actually have it right down here. So here's part one. This is what we already have in. And then part two is this right here. Okay. So we're going to click on that control C, right? I'm going to go back over here, go over here, control V. And let's widen this so I have more room to play with. Let's get rid of all those spaces. All right, so now we're going to close those quotations, close the parentheses, and we're not done. You're gonna, you can see right here, question mark. Uh, it's not working yet, right? Because we're not done. What we actually need to add is a comma one close those two, those two quotations, then hit enter. There we go. Consumer discretionary. That is the long code. That is the hard one. Double click on that. We drop them all down. They are all there. You can see we've got our Home Depot, our Target, our consumer discretionaries. We got Clorox, Coca-Cola, and Procter & Gamble, our consumer finances, CS, JPM, uh, NASDAQ financials and you, you can read the rest but they're all there and it's all dynamic so if we want to change how about CVS back to Apple watch this healthcare we hit enter goes to information technology now we can move on to the breakdown because if you want to create a nice little breakdown or a pie chart one thing that sucks is it's we're not dealing with numbers. So you can't just add all the numbers together, right? I could go here, I could go to equals sum, do a little bit of that, highlight all of this, and then uh, this portfolio uh, in particular, let's make that all dollar signs, is this is $66,000. But I can't go and sort through all this. You can see I have three different information technology, three different industrials, one healthcare, for financials. So how could we just concentrate all of this and then add up? So if I want to add up this 8,000 and this 5,000 just for one column of consumer discretionary, we don't want any duplicates. Well, this is how it's a really simple formula, which is cool. We type in unique. Okay. You click that and then unique. And what I would do is I would actually go not just here, not all the way down to E18, I would continue to go down maybe to whatever, 100 or however many stocks you might want for this. So I'll go all the way down to E100, hit enter. And now this generates. And the reason why I did that is if I were to go to say sell 22 and add a, a different stock, if we were to add, I don't even know what, what, uh, 
whatever industry we're missing right now. I can't think of which one we're missing right now, but if you were to then add it down here, this will update accordingly if we don't have all the industries. So after that, now how do we get to generate the price for this? Now this is also a pretty cool formula. I just recently learned about it, but pretty much we're doing some more if is blank. So equals if open parentheses is blank, open parentheses, and then what we want is this right here, G2. So if G2 is blank, then we want it to be blank. So open quotation, or close quotation, comma. Now we want to do a sum if function. So sum if, open parentheses, we're going to want E2, which is this, all the way down to E100 that we had it last time. There we go, all the way down to E100. So this is saying if, sum if, industry, okay, comma, G2 again, so discretionary, so G2. So if there's discretionary here in here, what we want to do is sum those together. So again, this is saying look through this list, E2 to E100, and if you find discretionary, which is G2, consumer discretionary, then add together, and then we just highlight the market values all the way down to D100, or however many stocks you plan or think you will end up having in this chart. We close that off, hit enter, suggested autofill, there we go, and here's all of our industries and how much we have in each industry. So let's put a little money sign on that. And just so we could check our work, let's sum this together and see if we get the same number. So right here, there we go, 66,117, 66,117. So now that we know that that worked, now we can get to the easy stuff. Let's just add in some color here. Uh, let's see that and this. We will bold this. Okay, last part is the fun stuff. If we highlight all of this and we go to insert chart, there we go. Here's our chart. If we want to make it look pretty, we could do that. Hit the donut, go down, make it 3D. Then if you want to do what I did, um, let's see, I went to the slices and change all the colors. And guys, if you've made it this far, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You guys are rocking with that, helping my algorithm. Um, I, I like the way my channel is growing and I got a lot more videos that have come out all related to Google Finance. You guys seem to really be liking that stuff. So do me that favor. So here we go, that's looking good. We'll add the chart style. The background, a very light gray. Uh, the very last thing, where is it? Our titles. So titles, industry, breakdown. We could bold that, we could center it, make the text a little bit bigger, make it black so it's easier to see. There we go. If we take this, we can now shrink it a little bit expand that so we could see everything put it over here now check this out so everything will update now so if we go to home depot we'll use that example again if i had 200 shares see that all of that updates up here consumer discretionary that updates we'll change that back to 20 now here's the cool part let's take this here let me drag this down we'll have a bunch of na's na's and this will give us uh, this will give us is blanks. We could add the is blanks for here with Google Finance, but I'm just trying to make this video quick compared to my other videos. So now if we were to add, and we'll just say I own 20 shares of all of whatever these are going to be. So we can start to add, let's see, let's put CVS back because we don't have that. CVS, let's put in Square. Uh, what else? How about, do we have PayPal? 
We'll add some PayPal. We'll add some, how about shop? Um, KMI. What else do we got here? We could add, how about Tesla? And you can see all this is updating. All of this is updating. Tesla is an energy, uh, I'm sorry, KMI is energy. So now we have a new energy field that got updated. So what we have to do here, because uh, you see this didn't drop all the way down. There we go. See that added to that because we have 20 shares, 296. Here we'll make that green. So everything is being added in and updating. I guess uh, looks like KMI is such a small portion. What happens if we increase it? Oh, you know what? Our chart. Our chart's not even uh, including that additional cell. So don't don't make the same mistake I made there. But again, you guys could really create some cool stuff now. Here, plugs another energy company. Uh, we could add Ford. How about GE? And last one, let's go with... Um, how about Lowe's? So we could, there you go. I mean, it, it's right here. It's pretty cool how it all works. Let's do some of this. Let's filter through this. Here we go from A to Z. Make this all the same color just so it looks nice. But that's it. That is how you pull industry. It is from Fidelity. This is the part that we're scraping. Make sure to have those two ends and the A2 or whatever cell you're pulling from. And then the unique function is to consolidate it into this nice thing so you can make nice charts like this. But that is all I got for you guys. Want to keep this video nice and simple. If you liked it, again, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I got tons of Google Sheets tutorials just like this for the stock market. Check that out. You guys rock. As always, I will see you in the next one.